Hi there, this is Sandra from the Shulvin's Nest. Thanks for joining me today. I am part of a fabulous group of ladies and we're doing a lockdown collaboration. Due to COVID, Ontario is locked down and we can only purchase essential items, such as a toilet bowl cleaner and stand. So what I'm going to do is use this. I had a great idea to create a crockery set. So stay tuned and see how I do it. Now I am always talking about a DIY chalk paint and I've not made it on my channel for a really long time. So I thought I would take you through the process. This is just a regular house latex paint that you would use for your walls or your ceiling. I love this color and I think it looks a lot like the old fashioned crocs that you see out there. I'm going to be taking some pure talc. Now the talc I have is from Johnson & Johnson baby powder. Since probably last year they've not been selling this anymore and I'm not sure even sure if you can get it in the states but you need to use just pure talc for this. If you use the cornstarch it's going to be way too slippery and it's not going to stick to anything. I am really bad at measuring, so I'm going to say it's a two to one ratio, which is what I have in my recipe. So two parts paint to one part talc. And you're gonna just mix it until you get a really nice thick consistency like a chalk paint would be. Now, there are different types of chalk paint out there and I like to do it so it's thick like Waverly or Folk Art. You want to be able to have it not drip off your brush. So I am now going to add just a little wee bit more and it's also really a good idea to do little bits at a time, mix it in and then add more as needed. I'm using a soft flat brush to apply the paint because I don't want to have that many brush strokes. And I'm also just taking it all the way around so you can see that I'm just going with really soft strokes and making sure that I give everything an even coverage. I'm going to give these two coats all the way around. I'm not going to do the bottom, but I am going to do just that top lip. I'm tracing the size and shape of the crock on this paper so I can use it as a template for the lids. I found this empty roll of tape that fits right into the top part and then I'm going to use that as a template for the second piece of the lid. I'm out in my garage and I found this piece of MDF board that I'm going to use to create the lids. So I'm tracing out three of the larger circles and two of the smaller circles. I'm going to use my jigsaw to cut out the circles. Of course, I have clamped down the board so it stays put and I'm also wearing my safety glasses. So here are all my circles. You can see that a couple of the smaller ones are a little wonky. That's okay. I've sanded them down to make them as round as I can. And now I'm going to be gluing these kitchen knobs. These were my old knobs from my kitchen cupboards. And I'm going to glue them onto these little wheels that I picked up at Michael's. I'm using my all time favorite glue, which is the Weld Bond glue. It's going to give these a permanent hold. I did put a little too much glue on one of them because it started to slide around. So I just took some off and then repositioned the knob. I'm also going to use the Weld Bond glue to glue the smaller pieces onto the center of the larger pieces. So these are going to be the inside of the lids. I'm going to use the same chalk paint color for the lids. I'm going to do the interior first and then I'm going to do the exterior once the interior is dry. What I love about this DIY chalk paint is that you can get one coat coverage on wood pieces. On ceramic and glass you've probably got to do two or three but you can see how beautifully it's covering just with the one coat. I'm going to give credit where credit is due. I got this original recipe from Holly over at Hot Humble Pie. I'll have her chalk paint recipe video linked in my description box. I'm also going to be painting the lids with some chalk paint. I've got them stuck on a bamboo skewer to just to make it a little bit easier for me to hang on to. I'm using home decor folk art chalk paint in rich black and I'm just going to give them one coat because if a little bit of that gold shows through I'm okay with that. These are supposed to look old and rustic and a little worn so I think that'll just 
add to the character and charm of these pieces. Now it's time to distress the lids. I'm just going to distress the top and the sides of the lids. So I'm using the clay color from Martha Stewart Vintage Chalk Paint and a dry brush. And I'm just going to go very lightly at first because I want to make sure that I don't get big globs of this color. And it looks really pretty. It's making it look like it has some wood grain, which is the effect that I'm going for. When I'm done using the clay, I'm going to go over it also with some black just to tie in the knob color and it turns out absolutely gorgeous. Now it's time to decorate the pots. I created these printables on my Cricut Design Space app and I wanted them to look like crockery stamps. I don't have any crockery stamps. I don't plan on getting any because they're really expensive and I just spent a whole ton of money on my Cricut. So using the Design Space app works really great because I can mimic what those IOD stamps and those other types of stamps look like. I'm going to be printing on tissue paper. As you can see, I've already done that. And now I'm just cutting it out as close to the edge as I can. One thing I forgot to mention in my tutorial, I'll mention it now, is that you need to wait at least an hour for the ink to fully dry before you place it onto your project. If you don't, it might smear with the ink. It also depends on the type of ink you're using in your printer. So you're going to have to experiment with it and see how it goes. All the paint is good and dry, so now it's time to assemble the knob on the lids. And again, I'm using my weld bond glue because that will give me a permanent hold. I can't believe how these turned out. My vision came to life. I'm so happy with them. They're absolutely gorgeous. And from toilet brush holders, oh my gosh, you've got to start looking outside of the box when you're hitting those dollar stores. Please make sure you head down to my description box, click on that playlist link and go see what Lisa, Sonia and Antoinette created out of just buying essential things from the dollar stores. The craft aisles are closed to us. We can't buy any clothing, just the things that we need like food and cleaning supplies to live our daily lives. So exciting and so fun. My second project is using this little bushel basket that was a thrift store find a while ago before we were in lockdown. So it was part of my stash. I'm just drilling some holes into it so I can push these steel bars right into it. I'm making a plant stand. So guess where these metal posts came from? Yep, they're the sticks from the toilet brushes and they are the perfect addition to this to make a beautiful little plant stand. I did have to work a little bit hard to get that in there, but it was worth it in the long run. Of course, I'm definitely not leaving these just the chrome color. I wanted to use my black hammered metal finish spray paint. I had run out of that, as you can see. So I'm going to go ahead and use the silver instead. And it turned out just as nice. If you like what you're seeing, I would love to have your support. Hit that subscribe button. You can do it now by clicking the little icon in the right lower corner or hitting the red subscribe button. I wanted to create a handle for this little basket so I'm taking some of this wire that I think I picked up at the Dollar Tree and I'm just going to cut three or four equal lengths of it using my snips. Using my needle nose pliers I'm just going to bend a hook shape into each of the ends and then I'm going to take one of the pieces of wire and wrap it around to hold everything in place. Using a thin drill bit, I'm going to drill a hole on either side of the basket so I have somewhere to hook the handle. Then I used another little loop of wire and created a sort of hook and loop kind of thing and just threaded it on and then twisted it around and looped it through again until it was secure. 
To assemble the legs, I took these posts and I pushed them through the holes that I had made with my drill earlier. Then I added some hot glue all the way around just to hold it secure while I was working on it. I decided that I needed something to hold the leg a little bit more securely. The hot glue alone wasn't doing it. So I'm taking some of this white nautical rope. This is not from the Dollar Tree. It's from a local craft store. And I really like it because it's the cotton rope like you can get at the Dollar Tree, but it's a lot thinner. So it just really worked well for this project. I'm also using my little silicone makeup applicator to make sure that I don't burn my fingers because I'm using a lot of hot glue for this. I'm going to wrap the nautical rope around five times and then cut it and glue it to the back. And this just made the legs that much more sturdy. I did add some additional hot glue to the inside just to make sure that they wouldn't wiggle around. I'm going to add a little grippy handle onto the wire handle. Sometimes you see that like in old fashioned things, they're a little wood handle. I didn't have anything like that that would work for this. So I decided to use some of this nautical rope. And to make it thicker, I'm gluing a piece down first, and then I'm gonna take another piece and wrap it around on top of this. It's just going to make the handle look much thicker. The inside of this basket didn't look very pretty, so I decided to add some faux lavender into it. I'm just putting some hot glue on those legs and I'm gluing in half of a large styrofoam ball. And that works really great if you don't wanna to have to fill everything with the floral foam, that can get a little pricey. I added some preserved moss, some lavender flowers in different shapes and sizes, and I think this little basket turned out really cute. Thank you so much for watching today. I really appreciate your support. I'd also like to thank Lisa for getting us all together for our lockdown collaboration. If you like what you saw, I'd love for you to give me a thumbs up. That tells YouTube you like what you see and they help to promote my channel, which in turn helps me grow. Hope to see you all in the next one. Bye for now. Mm -hmm.